afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. My name is Ken Burtness, and I'm coming to you from the North Shore out at Haleiwa. Today, we have a very special program about making life changes. While uh, things are, you know, things get difficult or things get interesting, how we make those changes and those transitions. And to do that and to help me are my good friends, Gary and Cindy Quinn. And they're both former residents, but now they're coming to us from Oregon. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you, Ken. It's nice to be here. Yeah, I'd like to say it's nice if I had to shower and put on this here a lower shirt. <laughs> so I'm still happy to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having us on, Ken. You know, I loved having my Aloha shirt on when I went to the uh, to the mainland because everybody would look at me and they'd be really impressed and they'd say, oh, you're from Hawaii? Gee, you know, tell me about Hawaii. And so I just stopped wearing suits and ties and all that stuff, no matter how formal the situation was. Basically, you know, like at a conference or something. But uh, always got great reviews from Aloha shirts. So I really in, enjoy that. So yeah, you guys never look go great wrong. With always, <laughs> yeah, can't go wrong with Aloha. Absolutely. That's true. You know, I think a good place to start on this about making choices, life choices, and doing it joyfully. Is that first big, well, it's, it's not actually the first choice, but it's one of the, certainly one of the biggest that you'll make in a lifetime. And that is making a choice and a movement from being single to being a duo, to being married or partner, uh, and to having that special person in your life. So maybe we could start the show with you guys talking a little bit about that, how you got together and how you decided that, you know what, we're a couple, we're a twosome. Okay. Um. I guess I'll start it off because Cindy said I should start it off, which is good <laughs> enough for me. <laughs> um, I have been flying for, we were both flight attendants. Cindy was hired in 1970 with Pan Am. I was hired in 1978. And somewhere around uh, early 1980, I had transferred to Hawaii from Los Angeles. So I walked into the Pan Am office after a long trip uh, coming from Japan, I believe. And she was in the office talking to a supervisor. She was in her Armani uniform and back to me. And I thought, gee, that uniform looks particularly attractive. And I made the mistake of walking up next to her because I wanted to see what the rest of the uniform looked like. And I looked over at her and she was just, just took my breath away. So being a typical male that has his breath taking away, I looked at her and immediately said, oh, uh, oh. Uh, I couldn't speak. So um, having grown up in the Philippines for part of my youth, I speak one of the dialects there, and I assume she was Filipina. So I asked her in Filipino, I said, uh, Filipino kaba. And she looked at me, and she gave me that look that women can give to a man, kind of the head-to-toe look, checking you out to see what kind of nutcase you are. <laughs> and uh, she answered and said, I look it, but I don't speak it, big boy. And that was it. I was smitten. I thought, she's beautiful, and she's perky. So uh, it was a done deal for me, but uh, Cindy was coming off a relationship, so she wasn't really interested in uh, romance at the time. I was. So uh, she just said, can we be friends for quite a number of months? And I said, you know what? If I have any hope of uh, opening this door, I'll just relent to being her friend. And if that door should open up, great. And if not, at least I'll have made a friend. And uh, after... Many months, uh, she finally wore down, and after drugging her intensely and asking her to marry me, she said yes. She doesn't remember any of that, of course. But... Of course, because I was drugged out. <laughs> That's right. So we, we got married about uh, a year after that, uh, and like uh, many married couples, we had our, our challenges. You know, where do you put the spoon? Does the salt pepper go on the table? Where does it get put away? You know, the little things you bicker and fight and come to... Uh, uh, some type of agreement on. But um, in any event, uh, not long after we were married, to jump to that, uh, we got laid off. We had just bought a home up in Haleiwa, not far from where you live, and we got laid off. And that was really our first big challenge. We were just in our first year to a marriage, so still in the honeymoon stage. And um, losing your job and having a mortgage was could have been really heavy, but we decided to do a number of things. One, canceled all subscriptions, all magazines, didn't buy anything if we didn't need it, didn't get in the car if we didn't need to go somewhere, walk to Foodland, get the exercise, uh, stop drinking altogether, no booze, no fun, 
uh, went to a lot of baseball games with other laid off crew members and made the best of it. And before too long, we had our jobs back and life went on. So uh, I think like uh, Lucy told Charlie Brown one time, if you worry and worry, worry, you've just wasted a good worry when things turn out right. And they did. I think having that challenge too. Uh, so uh, right after we got married was a real good indicator, Ken. I think when couples go through crisis right away, not that they intend to, but when they did come, we learned a lot about each other. And I remember when we lost our jobs for those three months, Gary said to me, so do you do anything other than pour coffee on an airplane? <laughs> And I said, I've got some skills. I've got skills. Yeah, she can pour tea as well. I <laughs> talented. But um, the greatest uh, thing I learned in those few years that we were married was you got to have humor in a relationship. And humor we have had for 42 years. And I still think he's pretty weird, but in a good way. <laughs> His mom always tells me, you really married a weird person. I said, you raised him. I have to re-raise him. <laughs> but we've had a lot of fun in our 42 years. And I think flying together, working together, living together, that could have caused some issues. But um, because we were on the major big airplane, we always worked at opposite ends of the cabin. And But when we got to foreign countries, we really got to play. And that was that really solidified our relationship. And we're so very grateful that we were able to work and live together. Yeah, we actually got paid to fly around the world and have fun together. We worked hard to get to where we would have fun, but uh, it gave us a chance to have layovers in different countries with each other, uh, learn learn different things, try different foods, meet different people. It was it was a great career, especially flying together with uh, my beautiful spouse. We had a good time on and off the plane. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. You know, one of the things that we talked about uh, before the show was that one of the challenges that we all face, especially when we get older, is the loss of loved ones. And mm -hmm. uh, But that happens all the time in our life. You know, we lose contact with people. We get into disagreements with our friends and for some reason, we it seemed to be cut off from them. And uh, so a lot of friends uh, are with us, but a lot of friends we lose. And uh, losing a friend, losing a loved one, losing a relative is is really hard. And I know you guys have gone through that yourselves. And, uh, and I know some of the people that are watching uh, are going through that or have gone through that. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about how to how to do that very difficult change and do it with uh, joy? Um, when we lost when we lost our parents, all four of them, in 14 months, it was very difficult because they were our best friends. We um, played with them very hard. Um, and losing them all together in a year and a half really, really, you know, took us back. But what we did, and I learned this in your class, <laughs> that when you go through a major loss, take some time out for yourself to heal. And so we did. We took actually a whole year off. Uh, we visited several different states. We are blessed to have 52 nieces and nephews. And we went around the United States and um, offered our help in serving them. And in the meantime, didn't realize that taking that time off for us was a very healing, healing season for us. And yes, it's painful to this day. They've been gone for 11, 12 years now. But at the same time, we recognize that's the cycle of life, you know, and we were so grateful that we took that time off for us to heal because when we came off of that healing journey, we were ready for the next adventure. And uh, and to add to that, uh, we were just so blessed to be close to our parents. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in life, you meet people that, for one reason or another, don't get along with their parents, um, seriously don't like their parents, or the parents don't like them for for whatever reason. And I suppose, philosophically speaking, just because you're born into someone's house doesn't mean you should get along, brothers, sisters, parents, and whatnot. But we were blessed that we did. So we also tempered the loss by remembering how close we were to them, how fortunate we were to have their influence in, in our lives and to have them um, uh, love us for so many years. And then the, you know, the old saying about payback as a female dog, I think would be the correct word. Um, 
payback was not um to be able to care for our folks in their final months was was an absolute blessing in our lives uh to learn about uh, giving back about some patients my my mom had pretty advanced alzheimer's but we learned some of the tricks of dealing with that um uh, much like dealing she did with us when we were kids if we were being naughty she would divert our attention to something else so when she was naughty or whatnot we would divert her and uh it was the best of times and only on one or two occasions the worst of times and those went away quickly so we we were blessed a thousandfold uh, by that 14 month span and can i just interject one thought ken for those of, of you who are going through loss um we learned in that healing journey that when we were really missing them or hurting that day, we would say to each other, jump the fence. And what we meant by that was jump the fence from mourning to being so grateful that we had them for so long, all the lessons they taught us. And once we started sitting on that side of the fence of being grateful and thankful for the years that we had, we could just feel our sadness lifting. And that, <laughs> that helped us a lot. Because we did go through those days, and I'm so grateful that we went through them together, and we could use those buzzwords like, I'm feeling kind of sad, did it? We'll jump the fence. And then we'd start talking about the good times. Yeah. Jump the fence. I think that's a great phrase. I'm going to steal it and use it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great phrase and a great description. One of the things that I would add to what Cindy and Gary are talking about is that relationships uh, that come from... Uh, being relatives, for instance, like uh, parents and mm -hmm. children and that. We tend to think that th that just happens and it's, uh, you know, it just happens. It comes out of the blue and you have perfect parents and perfect kids. And that's just not the case. And one of the things that I've always been impressed about with uh, Cindy and Gary is that they do not take anything for granted. They continually uh, help. They continually work at a relationship. And the most successful uh, parent-children relationship is where the parents have to work to understand what the kids are going through and how to really uh, be with them uh, and help them in through these hurdles that they're going through. And the same thing goes for the kids. They have to understand where their parents are coming from. So each of them have to put themselves in the other person's shoes to a degree. And if you learn that lesson when you're young and you can do that, and this, of course, goes with friends and uh, siblings and all the other people that are important to us, but especially with parents and kids, uh, it makes life so much different and so much easier uh, when we put, when we work at it, when we put our heart mm -hmm. into it and we think about the other person in there, whether they're a parent or a friend or a sibling or whatever. So mm -hmm. and my hat's off to both Cindy and Gary, because that's what they do. Uh, I know that because uh, I was in the great position of really getting to know both these people differently. You know, a lot of couples that I've met, I know them as a couple. I meet them as a couple. But uh, with Gary, Gary was my computer guru, and he and I did lots of projects, and he taught me lots of things about the computer, about filming, about videography, which he's an expert in. And we did some uh, film compilations, one of which is very appropriate to this show. It was the joy of humor and laughter. And uh, Gary and I put that together, and that was a great experience. And with Cindy, Cindy was one of the best students I've ever had. Uh, oh. Not only was she a good student, but she came in and she brought joy to the class. Mm -hmm. And she was the only student that not only brought joy and made everybody smile, but she also brought us brownies every once in a while. <laughs> really made the class really. Uh, I think that's called the brown nosing, but uh, <laughs> it's still <so> legal. <laughs> it doesn't. I get it to stay away. So much it does the. Uh, the mouth and the uh, taste buds and everything. Uh, but even, yeah, even her brownies smell good, but uh, boy, they were great to eat. So, uh, so I had the great fortune of meeting both of these in different ways and then spending time with them together. And it's been a joy, but these are people that don't take for granted uh, the joys of life. They work at bringing other people joy and they work at looking for joy in their life. So that's- And can, can I just add one point to that? Um, like you were saying, you know, we all have choices. I think that when we recognize that people are doing the very best they can in the moment, 
that mm -hmm. helps me a lot because sometimes we can get discouraged with people's behavior or whatever. But when I remind myself they're doing the best that they know how for this moment, then it seems so much less judgmental and so, so much more accepting of the person. Because all of us are doing the best we absolutely know how. We'll learn better for tomorrow, but today I'm giving you my best. And I think that that comforts me to know and takes the judgment out of anyone's behavior. I think that's incredibly important. Uh, and it's, I like the um, reference to tomorrow because we're all, we're all learning how to do it better. And a lot of people's regrets are saying, I could have done better. Well, at the time, you did the best you could. And that's... Uh, right. And, and then you're learning from that as well. So uh, it's certainly mm -hmm. been true in my life and most of the people that I know. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Gary, you hey, were going to thought? Yeah, I was just going to add, Ken, thank you. Um, a lesson I learned early on was in high school, I was chosen to be an American Field Service scholar. And I'd had four years of German. So where are they going to send me? Obviously, Switzerland, Austria, or Germany. When I got the call this one night, the lady says, we're sending you to the Philippines. So I'm looking on the map by Cuba. I didn't, I didn't really know where it was. <laughs> and when I, I remember looking at the globe thinking, gee, I, I don't think they speak German way down here. <laughs> and I was disappointed. Um, but I didn't want to show that, of course, because it was still quite an honor to be chosen to represent my school, my country, if you will, my family, and go live with another family for an entire year. And um, so it was rather interesting. Once I got there, from almost day one, there was a deja vu where I felt like I belonged. I just fell in love with the country, the people, the food, uh, just everything about it. But about three months into being there, I was a bit discontent with the foster family I was with due to no fault of theirs. They're an incredibly wonderful family. So I asked our sponsor, I said, could I maybe consider changing families. And she said, well, I'll tell you what, this was two months into it. She said, I want you to give it another three to four weeks because three months is a very important transition time. And I think you might find a change. And sure enough, as if by magic, um, by month three, I was looking back, what was I complaining about? These people are fantastic. And I've remained relatively close to all of them for uh, 50 plus years now. So that's advice I've passed on to especially younger people that are, oh, I don't like college or I'm not happy with my teacher. I said, just hang in there. And there's something about a 90 day period, if you will, or giving yourself a second chance that uh, that was a lesson I'd never uh, forgotten. I sometimes forget to apply it, but I've always remembered the lesson. That's a great mm -hmm. lesson. That That is. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. That's. That's terrific. Um, let's talk about, uh, since we're talking about uh, different parts of the world, um, let's talk about your move from Hawaii. Um, you know, it's very difficult, I think, for people uh, who come from the mainland and come here to Hawaii and decide to live here in Hawaii. It's a big transition uh, from the mainland or other areas of the world. Uh, and it you know, it, we certainly could use that 90 days to uh, really appreciate uh, where we're transitioning to, like you're saying. Uh, but the other part is being in Hawaii such a long time like you guys were, and then moving to the mainland, which a lot of people do as well. So we've got both those different changes uh, happening. And uh, mm -hmm. I know that was hard for you because uh, we had such wonderful times here in Hawaii, and you mm -hmm. love Hawaii as much as I do, which is uh, incredible. And uh, mm -hmm. You made that transition. So maybe we could talk about how we do that to make, because that's a difficult transition to, mm -hmm. to change, leave a place that you love so much and, and then find a place that you also love, which I know you do with Oregon. So tell us about that. We do. Send you on a start or? Yeah, the main reason we made that move, Ken, was um, like we mentioned, the loss of our four parents. And we realized in our 60s that we didn't have a whole lot of time left to really connect with our siblings. And all our siblings lived on the mainland. And so we waited out. And like you said, as much as we hated to leave paradise, we realized that this was necessary. And so we transitioned over here to um, uh, the mainland. And we took that year just kind of looking for places to land. And when Gary had said to me, I found a place in Oregon. And I said, well, what do you know about Oregon? He goes, it starts with an O. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
I said, I heard it rains a lot and it's cold. And he goes, well, you know, we have to give someplace a chance. So we did. Um, we saw a home on a hill, made a bid on it on our year transition, got back to Hawaii. And the realtor called and said, well, welcome to Oregon. And we're like, uh-oh, <laughs> this is it, huh? So we came back to the islands and packed all our stuff up and friends like yourself, why Oregon? Why Oregon? Why not? You know, we just needed to land somewhere that we knew we could be closer to our siblings. So that was the catalyst of us moving. Yes, it was difficult. And the change of weather and environment was uh, very different for us. But in the first year, we sat out on our lanai and we looked out over the water and said, we feel so blessed that Oregon called us. We feel like Oregon did call us. And we're really happy here. Of course, we love going back to the islands and seeing our friends and family there. But Oregon is home now, and we're in close proximity to all our siblings. And that that's huge for us now as we enter our 70s. Yeah, well, uh, it, it makes me recall some advice from a friend who um, the airlines were laying off in Hawaii, so they were looking for people to move to the mainland to relocate, and he chose to do that. And after a couple of years, he called us one day and said, uh, you guys, I'm happy to tell you there's life after Hawaii. And I remember <laughs> thinking, okay, there's life after Hawaii. Good luck, dude. And I, I couldn't believe he said that. But um, for those who may be watching this, this show who find that life in Hawaii, about the only drawback really to the island, certainly not the people, certainly not the culture, the food, the environment, but the cost of living uh, is stressful for a number of families with numerous jobs. We, we know that. We've been there as well. And uh, that part of being on the mainland is a, it's a financial relief, but it's also pretty darn fun here, too. And Hawaii is just a, a plain ride away uh, still. So we were fortunate to live there most of our lives, Cindy, for 40 years, me for 38 years, I believe. And um, Life here on the mainland is awful good. And uh, here, I'll show you a quick view of what we're forcing ourselves to look at today. I don't know if you all can see that. But uh, after living on the North Shore, we had to get back on the water. So we've got a lovely little two-bedroom home, reasonably affordable, a little boat. And we love our time fishing, playing on the river. And, uh, cold weather, one drawback. <laughs> Only because <laughs> the body's used to Oregon, but the nose isn't. You still get the runny nose. <laughs> I think, too, uh, Ken, um, if we can speak to people our age and changing and uh, transitioning in life, we, you, I think we have to be willing to take risks. You know, and it's that risk taking, not knowing what's at the other end, um, is so exciting because as we found leaving the islands after 40 years, we're so grateful that we took that risk. And I remember moving here and I was standing in line and a lady saw my Hawaii license plate and she goes, you moved here recently? And I said, yes. She goes, from the islands? I said, yes, we did. She goes, at your age? <laughs> And when she said at my age, I was 64 then, I said, oh, I didn't know there was an age limit for moving. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's rather interesting, all through, too. All through life, we have to be willing to take those risks because we don't know what's on the other end. But sometimes, most of the time, it can be a very exciting adventure. Yep, and this certainly was one. Uh, it was rather cute when we first moved here. You know, you're you're missing things in a move. You need a colander, you need a certain spoon or something. So you go to the dollar store and the hardware store and you buy this stuff. So I'm in the dollar store one day and lady behind me, she sees my uh, Hawaii visa card. She says, oh, you from Hawaii? And I go, yeah, how leave you? She goes, oh, I know. She goes, you've been Hawaiian food truck? And kind of like my friend earlier, I'm like, okay, I'll look for the Hawaiian food truck here in Florence, <laughs> Oregon. And uh, three weeks later, I see this yellow taste of, Hawaii food truck, and sure enough, some of the best Hawaiian food, local food on the planet, is right here in our town by a couple from Maui. So we get our taste of Hawaii. Uh, lots of people who wear Aloha shirts, and every once in a while it gets up to 72 degrees, so it feels just like Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. You know, I've seen pictures of, of Gary and Cindy's houses, and they've, they're really in the best of places. I mean, it's, it's uh, southwestern Oregon. And they live close enough that they've got, they can see the ocean from where they live. 
on their on their uh, top floor, and they're right next to the river. And I love rivers, and uh, very mm -hmm. envious of their time on the river. And I hope to talk them into coming back and uh, sharing a little bit what it's like to live by a river and sail on it, and uh, you know, and ride it. And uh, it's it's just a wonderful thing. And we'll keep the salmon hungry for you. The fishing here is better than Hawaii. That's for oh. darn sure. <laughs> Great. You know, one thing that, you know, that uh, really impressed me uh, when Cindy talked about risk, uh, that's so very important. Whatever age you're at, mm -hmm. is that there comes opportunities for change, and mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes change is risky. But if you don't make the change, if you don't take the risk, you're really in danger of sitting back for the rest of your life and saying, you know, I should have tried that. I should have done that. That's a big regret that people have. And uh, when you make that choice and take that risk, uh, you can always make another choice down the mm -hmm. line. So you haven't done anything that's set in concrete, but you've taken the risk and you've gone out. And uh, that's a wonderful thing to help people grow and enjoy life. So that's terrific. Thank you for that story. Well, listen, isn't stagnation risky as well? Yes, very you much. Know, so. Life is risky. and. Uh, it, Take it full on. And one of our favorites, uh, I'll interject this real quick, uh, a song that I think virtually everybody knows, and we've just sort of used it as a little philosophy in our part, is uh, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. And as Cindy would say, tell anybody. Well, if you're going to row your boat, you got to get in it. <laughs> you got to engage in life. You got to take responsibility for rowing your boat and it's your life and no one else can maneuver it. You've got to get in the boat, pick up the oars, take responsibility and get going. And yep. gently down the stream, I think sometimes we forget to give ourselves permission to be gentle with our decisions. Sometimes we make decisions in the moment and, oh, I should have thought of something else, but just to be gentle with us because Life is hard. There's, there are ups and downs. There's stormy days. There's smooth sailing days. But we want to sail through life gently and be gentle with ourselves. And the last three, two verses are merrily, 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 merrily. Are you living a life filled with joy? Do you have, like you said, Ken, I don't want to live with regrets. I want to leave earth with joy in my heart, laughter, yeah. peace. And to choose that every day, I get mm -hmm. to choose joy. And some days when you don't feel like it, you can say, I don't feel like it, but today I choose joy. And finally, mm -hmm. life is but a dream. And we look at each other sometimes when we're floating down the river in our little boat. We're like, we're living the dream. This is the best life that we can have and we have joy and peace and it's a dream that's come true for us and we've taken risks and yes there's been ups and downs and losses like you said and many transitions but at the same time we together can remind each other let's choose joy in all of it absolutely yeah terrific you know we're out of time and i couldn't think of a better way to end i think you summed it up perfectly uh cindy and uh and I hope people that have watched this show can be ready to take some risks and not be afraid of change because there's a lot of joy ahead of people in their life. <clears throat> and taking that risk and finding something new and something exciting is part of that. So thank you. Thank you both for all your sharing. And uh, I'm really hoping to talk you guys into coming back and doing another show with us. There's lots of other topics that these two are very good at. And uh, they're always wonderful to share with you guys. It always makes me smile and happy. So thank you for well, being thank here. Well, thank you. Thank you, Right Ken, back for at you, Ken. Us. We love you guys. Aloha. Aloha, yeah. kakayaka kako. Hawaii, Hawaii. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Thanks to <laughs> all. Uh, of course, we say in my islands, maraming salamat po. <laughs> oh, yeah, the okay. Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, thanks to all the people at Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, uh, Jay and uh, Haley and Michael and Carol and that, thanks for being as supportive of us and our program. And thanks to all of you for, for listening. And I hope you tune in in two weeks. We're going to have another show in a series of finding joy and humor and laughter. So I hope you're with us then. Aloha.
If you liked this show, why don't you give us a like or subscribe to our channel? Thanks so much.